I am a physicalist. This means that I believe that all that exists in the universe is matter and energy. No spirits, no karma, no fate, and no gods. Nothing that is not testable by some physical means. I believe this for scientific reasons, not theological ones. I have no interest in eliminating religion. Your personal beliefs are your own business and of no concern to me. But when you attack my beliefs or attempt to retard scientific progress, I will respond in kind. I began as a Christian in a secular family. While we never practiced our religion, it was always implicit that we were Christians. The city I grew up in is almost entirely Christian, mostly devout evangelicals, and the concept of being irreligious was entirely foreign. When I began considering my spirituality, the only logical option seemed to be turning more devout, as I had never met anyone who had gone in the opposite direction. I questioned religion in general, such as wondering whether the Greek gods had really existed and went extinct when their believers dissipated, but never Christianity. I accepted the Bible as being literally true and prayed daily, but I found that none of my prayers were answered. In fact, I noticed no difference whatsoever from before I began praying and reading the Bible. As my knowledge of history and science increased, I found discrepancies between them and scripture, and had to decide which was true. Because the scientific explanations fit better with my experience, I accepted them, but with limitations. I considered that God controlled those things for which science had no explanation, such as the origin of life. When considering where a tree came from, I realized that God had not placed it there. It had grown from a seed which fell from another tree, which grew from a seed, and so on back to the first life forms. I knew nothing of evolution or abiogenesis, nor did I know that science had viable hypotheses regarding the origin of life. However, I realized that science had been making progress, and would continue to do so. That is, God didn't hold the planets in their orbits until Einstein explained the mechanism by which gravity functions. Science is just a description of how the universe works, and God doesn't step back as science moves forward. With sufficient time, science will find an adequate explanation for everything in the universe, without having to invoke the supernatural. The universe works without God's constant intervention, and if God affected anything material, we would have detected something behaving abnormally. The planets would stop in reverse direction, noble gases would bond with other elements, plants and animals would grow and change abruptly. If God affected anything within our universe, we would have detected some anomaly that was in opposition to the laws of science. In fact, if God violated the laws of nature, we would be unable to perform any kind of science at all. Nothing would function in a constant manner, and we would be unable to tell whether an observation was a result of natural laws or God's hand. We could make no deductions from what we see, nor would the results of our experiments be constant. I could see nowhere God was required for the functioning of the universe. As for free will, if God interferes in human affairs, then our free will has been overridden. We can never tell whether our actions are a result of free will or God's desires, so we must assume that everything is guided by God. Either we have complete free will or none, in which case it doesn't matter what we believe. We're just puppets believing whatever God wants us to. Furthermore, if God answered our prayers, we would have measurable results. But as I said, there is no difference between praying and not. If God exists, he has left us to ourselves. So I came to the conclusion that even if God exists, he has no effect on anything in our universe. However, I continued to believe that he exists outside the universe and was responsible for setting the universe in motion. He created it and left it to its own devices, not affecting it in any way, including having children and speaking to prophets. Eventually I realized that assuming that God created the universe is just the God of the gaps argument and a complete abandonment of the scientific process. Just because we have no explanation for the creation of the universe doesn't mean we won't in the future, no matter the current limitations of science. What's more, even if there is something supernatural, something science can't explain outside the universe, we have no reason to assume that it resembles our conception of God in any way. My beliefs have nothing to do with not wanting to be responsible to God nor do I find my life to be empty and meaningless. I am responsible to myself and to those around me. If I behave immorally, I must live with the guilt. I can't just ask God to absolve me. And those around me will react negatively to my negative behavior. While filling a propane tank, the attendant asked me if I had already paid for it. I could have responded that I had and left without paying, but I didn't. It had nothing to do with God watching me. I knew it was wrong. If you only behave because someone is looking down on you, then you truly are immoral. As for the assertion that my life is meaningless, which is usually followed by the suggestion that I kill myself, I find my own purpose for living. There is no absolute meaning, so I can decide for myself. Whether I choose to travel the world or raise a family, I can find satisfaction in whatever I select. As I only have 80 or so years to accomplish my goals, I cherish every moment that I have. Conversely, if your purpose in life is to love God and get into heaven, you are no different than fungus waiting to die. You are an ant, mindlessly serving your queen. 
I see no reason for you to take preventative action in the event of imminent death, which would get you to heaven faster. I would also like to respond to Venom Fang X's assertion that atheism is like the last day of school, leaving a structured environment for a rule-free environment. On the contrary, I find becoming an atheist to be more akin to moving out from one's parents' house, which Venom Fang X clearly has not done. Moving out makes one responsible for one's own actions. If I don't pay my rent, I end up on the street. If I want a new TV, I get another job to pay for it. I don't just ask my parents to give me one. Likewise, from Venom Fang X's statements about atheists not behaving themselves because they aren't worried about God watching them, I can assume that he only ever did his homework because his parents were looking over his shoulder. I always did my homework not because someone was enforcing their arbitrary rules, but because I recognized that my actions had outcomes. If I were to have the life I wanted, I would need good grades. Of course, if you're planning on living with your parents for the rest of your life, then you certainly would need constant supervision. Atheism requires being mature enough to accept responsibility for one's own actions. Religion provides a convenient escape from this problem for those who aren't mature enough to accept responsibility.